Yo, what is up guys? Stale Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hope you guys are doing well. A quick preview and prediction for the biggest fight of the weekend. Gennady Golovkin versus Sergei Derevyanchenko. Now this fight takes place at middleweight and it is for the vacant IBF middleweight title. And I've got to say, I think this is a good fight. Obviously, Gennady Golovkin still an elite middleweight. And, you know, the two blemishes on his career against Canelo, well, we all know he won the first fight. And the second fight could have gone either way. You know, the guy's never really been clearly beaten. And it's obvious, like I said, he's still an elite middleweight. As for Sergei Derevinchenko, for me, the guy is not a top five middleweight. But I think he's a solid top 10. You know, back end of the top 10 ranking, you know, maybe position 8, 9 or 10. But in and around that area. So for me, it's a battle between two top 10 middleweights. So I think it's a good fight. I really do. And, you know, stylistically, this one should gel quite well. Should be a good fight to watch on TV. Now, let's briefly talk about the tail of the tape and go through the stats. We will start with Gennady Golovkin. He has a record of 39 wins, one defeat, one draw. 35 of those 39 wins coming by way of knockout. Sergei Derevinchenko has a record of 13 and 1. 10 of those 13 wins coming by way of stoppage. Sergei Derevinchenko's only career defeat was a close fight against Danny Jacobs. Funnily enough, that was also for the vacant IBF middleweight title at the time. He lost that fight by a split decision, but he went life and death with Danny Jacobs. So that goes to show what level he is on. He's a genuine world-level contender. Obviously, looking at those records, Golovkin has had a lot more fights. And, you know, quite frankly, he's a more experienced pro. He's been in there with better opposition. You know, Canelo twice, Danny Jacobs, David Lemieux, uh, Martin Murray, Daniel Gill. You know, these are all good names in the middleweight division. So Golovkin's fought a higher level competition and he's been fighting for longer and he's had more pro fights. So Golovkin, obviously, the more experienced pro. He's seen more in the pro ring than Sergei Derevinchenko. So those are the records. In regards to the uh, you know physical dimensions of both guys, Gennady Golovkin is listed as five foot ten and a half with a seventy inch reach, whereas Sergei Derevinchenko is listed as five foot nine with a sixty seven and a half inch reach. So if you read the official statistics and go by them, Golovkin is one and a half inches taller, and he has a two and a half inch reach advantage. Now, I've got to say, I'll be honest, I don't think Sergei Derevinchenko is 5'9". To me, he looks a bit smaller than that, but there we go, you know, I'm nitpicking. Sometimes these fighters lie about their height, arm length, etc. It is what it is, you know? But yeah, Golovkin taller, longer, and ultimately he is the bigger middleweight as far as I'm concerned. And I think that could play a factor on fight night. I really do. But anyway, on to the other basic stats. Both guys are orthodox fighters, and in terms of age, Golovkin is 37 years old, and Sergei Derevinchenko is 33 years old. Maybe the youth could play into Derevinchenko's hands. You know, he's not had as many wars. He's not been in the tough fights that Golovkin has, so that could be a possibility, but I really don't see it in this fight. I don't think this is the fight where we see age catch up with Golovkin, if I'm being honest. So that, that's the tale of the tape, you know, briefly run through the stats. But onto the style clash, who do I favour in this fight? I've got to say I do make Gennady Golovkin a steady favourite like everybody else. Not that Derevinchenko is a bad fighter. You know, we've seen him trouble elite middleweights like Danny Jacobs. But stylistically, I don't think this is a bad fight for Gennady Golovkin, if I'm being honest. Don't get it twisted, Derevinchenko is a good, solid, fundamentally sound boxer who performs well in most areas. He does. Good on the inside, quite good at mid-range, and capable on the outside. He can move backwards, he can fight going forwards. He's just a well-rounded fighter. But for me, Derevinchenko is one of those guys who appears not to have that second gear. You know, 
And I think if he's dragged into a rough dog fight or a high paced dog fight, the guy will come unstuck. You know, you go back to his two hardest career fights. Firstly, against Danny Jacobs. Now, for me, that fight was on a knife edge, but Jacobs pulled it out. Sergei Derevinchenko couldn't go to that next gear to secure the victory. You know, very close fight, don't get me wrong. And some people out there even thought he won. But, you know, for me, he left in that position where you could have given it to Jacobs. And Jacobs got his hand raised. And even in the fight with Jack Kolkai, Jack Kolkai, you know, performed valiantly that night. And he gave Derevinchenko a really hard fight. And when Kolkai was getting rough on the inside, really working him, showing good output and being aggressive, Derevinchenko really... I wouldn't say he struggled to live with him, but he was uncomfortable to say the least, you know? And don't get it twisted, Jack Kolkai is a good fighter, but he's no Golovkin. So for me, if Golovkin comes out behind that jab and applies pressure with those feet, then I could see, you know, Derevinchenko, not, not panic, but I can see him being uncomfortable with that situation where Golovkin's applying pressure, walking him down behind that jab, chipping away to the body. I don't think Derevinchenko is necessarily going to cope with that style. You know, he, like I said, he struggled with that against Kolkai. And, you know, Golovkin, he brings that pressure, but he does it with much better footwork. He cuts off a ring quicker and, you know, he gives you le less breathing room. And also, he's a much harder puncher, a much more precise puncher, and all around a more offensive juggernaut than Jack Kolkai. So if Kolkai has success by doing that, I really envisage Golovkin doing the same thing if he applies steady pressure. And, you know, that is Golovkin's game ultimately. You know, applying steady pressure behind that jab, working the body, and, you know, really, really basically killing you with his feet. You know, mental pressure as well as, you know, physical pressure. Golovkin's fo uh, footwork, especially on the come up, you know, his earlier fights, was a big part of his success. You know, shifting and, you know, closing the distance exceptionally quickly, not just, you know, his combination punching, not just for power, not just for body punching, shifting, cutting the ring, and applying pressure with those feet. And if Golovkin gets back to that in any sense, I think Derevinchenko is really going to struggle here. I really do. I mean, if Golovkin gets to the inside and he decides to fight Derevinchenko on his chest, Derevinchenko can certainly have success, as we know, Golovkin's hittable in the pocket against Canelo. Golovkin got his own work done, but he got hit a lot, especially to the body. So if this fight does go to the inside, I would like to see Derevinchenko work that body. Derevinchenko on the inside picks his shots really well. Uppercuts through the middle, hooks to the body. You know, I think on the inside isn't necessarily a bad place for Derevinchenko, you know. It's if Derevinchenko is on the retreat and Golovkin's applying pressure. If he could get on Golovkin's chest, try to smother a little bit, maybe that would be better suited for Sergei Derevinchenko because he is good on the inside, especially with his punch placement. But, um, you know, he himself gets hit on the inside, so maybe that's not a good idea, but I can't see him boxing on the back foot and outpointing Golovkin. Yes, he could be cagey for a few rounds. He was a very good amateur, so he's got the ability to do that. I just don't think he can win the fight that way. And I believe he'll be chopped down if he does fight that way. And um, if he stands off Golovkin, he's getting knocked clean out as far as I'm concerned. I really don't think he's suited to box with Golovkin due to a couple of defensive flaws. Um, so for me, boxing on the back foot, he could spoil. Maybe he could survive. Standing off Golovkin is a terrible idea. I think the best option for Derevinchenko is to get on Golovkin's chest, try to smother him and work him that way, work that body and try to outwork him, drag him into an inside war. But, um, you know, I've got a feeling Derevinchenko is going to try to do a bit of both. He'll try and work on the inside, but he'll also try to try to box with Golovkin. And when he does that, he'll get pieced up. Trust me on that. Derevinchenko, when he stands off people and boxes, I can't explain this without showing it, but try to understand what I say. He, he He's obviously an orthodox fighter, and he's got this weird habit of kind of having his body weight leaning to his right, so his head's kind of leaning to the right uh, at a tilt, 
And he is so open for that right hand, it's unbelievable. The straight right hand from Golovkin. If Golovkin throws that punch behind that jab, I'm telling you now, that's going to land if Derevinchenko stands off Golovkin. It's going to land. And, you know, so he needs to look for that right hand at the distance when he's standing off him. And also follow that right hand up with that left hook. I saw that, you know, catching Derevinchenko a lot in that Jack Cole Kai fight. And I could see him getting knocked out with one of those two punches. You know, the straight right down the pipe. Or maybe that straight right followed by that left hook behind it, you know. I could see him getting knocked out by either one of those shots. And, you know, my, my prediction in this fight is that Golovkin definitely gets the stoppage. I'm just a bit unsure of when it is. I think Derevinchenko will show some defiance. He'll be tough in there. He won't go willingly and maybe he will see out quite a few rounds. So, listen, if I had to bet, I would say Golovkin by a late stoppage. You know, last quarter of the fight. You know, maybe uh, rounds 10, 11, 12, something like that. That's where I'd be looking for Golovkin to get the stoppage. But yeah, I expect Golovkin to get the win here. And I expect him to uh, recapture that IBF middleweight belt. I'm intrigued to see how Golovkin looks in this fight though. I think this could be a good fight to see exactly how much Golovkin has left. Because like I said, Derevinchenko is a good fighter. Great amateur background, he knows what he's doing. And yeah, I believe he's a top 10 middleweight, so he'll have his moments, I'm sure he will. He'll find the target, he'll land some good shots, but I just don't think he can really keep Golovkin off of him. And I don't think he's got the style or ability to box with Golovkin. So yeah, we've got a Golovkin late stoppage in this fight. I'm intrigued to hear your viewpoints in the comments below. Uh, tell me how you think this fight will go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.